I sang that song for more than 60 years, a song of praise to Joseph Smith, the prophet of the restoration and founder of the LDS Church, the church I served as a bishop for five years. I knew the church was true. I was a faithful Latter-day Saint. My life has been built on certain truths, but wishing doesn't change the truth. Jesus said, you shall know the truth, and the truth will make you free. When I finally learned the truth about the real history and doctrines of Mormonism, I realized that I was following the gospel of Joseph Smith and not the gospel of Jesus Christ. I have come to learn that many others have made a similar journey out of the bondage of religion and into an authentic relationship with Jesus. And that's what this show is all about. Courageous people who want to share their story hoping that you, the viewer, will discover the same new life in Jesus. So if you're a Latter-day Saint who is struggling with questions or seeking a genuine encounter with the Savior, we invite you to join us tonight. We have a joyful message that we want to share with you. Hello and welcome to another episode of the Files. I'm your host, Bishop Earl. I appreciate you spending some time with us. I'm really delighted today to introduce you to Jenny Douglas. So nice to have you here, and what a wonderful story you have. It's, uh, it's going to be kind of fun to get this one shared. You know, I think a lot of Mormons uh, have a lot of questions about, well, of course, the church maybe at times, and then not knowing exactly what to do. And you've kind of touched on several of those areas that that are challenging to uh, to Mormons for sure, but as we usually do, where were you born and what's your little bit of your background? I was <laughs> born in the great state of Texas. Well, yeah, okay. And, uh, I uh, lived there till I was about five, so I don't remember too much oh, about it, and yeah. then I moved to Illinois, so I spent okay. most of my, my years growing up in Illinois. Okay, yeah. your parents, were they members of the church? Yes, very active, very committed. Right. Yeah. yeah. You even have some history in, in your family. Yeah, um, great uncle, you know, we're descended of David W. Patton, the first martyr of the LDS Church, yeah. um, the Twelve Apostles. Yeah. So, interesting. You, yeah, so you just, you're like many generational yeah. Mormon, and was there anything you, growing up, and you've just now recently been out of the church, but so growing up and everything, it was just all about the church, I'm yeah, sure, very right? absorbed in it, just every, yeah. everything was, you know, geared yeah. towards the ba church baptized yeah. at eight and mm -hmm. I guess mutual at 12 and yeah. you take seminary did you oh I did seminary yeah. is that early morning <laughs> the early morning I think five six a.m. that can be that painful pretty can't. early <laughs> <laughs> yeah. any questions ever come up though uh, during that during your um, I formative years not too much I kind of just wanted to do everything that you know, I felt that would bring that salvation and, you yeah. know, get me to the celestial kingdom. Right. But I did feel at eight years old a very heavy weight on me um, after I was baptized. After. That I, okay. I really just felt the weight of the sin. I just felt like I, after I made a mistake after baptism, you know, oh, yeah. you're like, you're clean. Oh, no, I, clean I messed up. Yeah. And, but I really did feel to a point of being really sick, you know, where oh. it's like this weight, like, I really can't do this you know I can't get, I can't do it you know I'm gonna mess up and yeah. how do I do this you know I can't keep all the rules I can't do it all so I got really down about it but um, interesting I just that made me even more committed and I prayed that the Lord would just help me get to the celestial kingdom yeah. you know and I'll, I felt that doing and those things hard. that the Mormons did yeah. and told asked us to do would all get right. us there yeah. so I really committed myself <laughs> after high school what happens um, I went to BYU and oh, did you? I really enjoyed my BYU experience. Yeah. And um, now there were lesson, uh, required institute classes, or whatever they called them there. Yeah, the, the Book of Mormon courses, yeah. and, and did, I took a New Testament course. And, at that uh, point, uh, were were they raising questions or dealing with any issues that you'd say were not curious? Too, or? I was, I was not too much into questioning. I just yeah. kind of really. Um, you know, believed my, what my parents had told me, sure. what my leaders had told me, and I hadn't really seen anything that really was questionable. I did, you know, the problem with polygamy, you know, that I kind of cringe at that, but, you know, you just think, well, it'll well, all work out. And I'll know? understand it when I need to in heaven. <laughs> yeah, and, yeah. Um, 
it never. I, I love the Book of Mormon. I had many um, wonderful experiences because I feel there really are some tr still some truths in there because one out of every nine chapters is from the Bible. Yeah. So I did, you know, still feel a connection yeah. there. Um, but um, my confusion came more uh, after I was married. Okay, so tell us about that. Did you meet your husband in Provo? Um, I, yeah, I did. He was out. Um, he was, he's from California, and he yeah. was just out there. Going to school? Or? Yeah, not yeah. going to school, just oh. uh, hanging out with friends, trying yeah. to meet some girls. And yeah. I met him there at the Singles Ward, and we had a lot of in common interests with music. We're both very musical. Oh. So. Um, and he was... I mean, you end up marrying in the temple. Yes, we got married in the temple. temple. Oh. And um, after many years of marriage, and um, we we moved from California to to um, Utah, yeah. and um, I started noticing there were some just you know things were different. You know, I'm not saying the church is true in California and not yeah. <laughs> here in Utah, but. Um, Things were different in that I just noticed that just wasn't a lot of love that was exhibited. There was just a lot more um, judgment and a lot more um, inconsistencies, you know. And I just felt I was sitting in council and... with the bishop, you know, yeah. in the in the groups, and and they would just talk about these people that they were supposed to be helping and ministering to with such judgment that I just was really sickening to me, and I was like. You know, Lord, how how did we get, let our church get so far away? How did how did you let your church get so far away? Is what I was just thinking. You know, yeah. from these principles of love. Did, and did you ever sense the hypocrisy? Is that kind of what you're saying yeah. too? Then I mean, because we we try to put on a good face. We try to act like, especially on Sundays or when we go to the temple or something, that we're all righteous and everything is good. But it isn't always that way, is it? Yeah, you know, and yeah. we 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 all struggle with things like that. But it just. Yeah. When, when you get to a point in your life where you're in need of, of that um, support and, and then you, you see that you're in a real situation. Or let's say, for instance, I, had, I was a foster mom. For a month oh. and a half, I had a child that I would eat every hour and just scream all night. And I couldn't cope, so I stayed home for a month and a half with the baby. And my husband would help me so I'd get sleep and we'd yeah. take turns. Come back to church after that, and people would just have ostracized us because... You know, we Figure we stopped attending. You know, and I was like, I'd never experienced that before. Oh. I, you know, in a time when I needed a lot of love and support, you know, I it's was so feeling it's... kind of like an outcast. You know? It's a it's a proud group of people. There's yeah. no question about that. And when they're challenged at all, or they think something's just a little bit amiss, it it becomes very difficult to yeah. to fit in, or at least they. Yeah. You know, let you know that you don't fit in quite. Yeah, <laughs> for sure. Now you were Relief Society president. You worked in primary and yeah. and uh, I guess mutual probably and yeah, with music I was mutual and uh, in mutual for six years about oh, yeah. uh, as a, as a beehive yeah. counselor. Well, and you know. you told me earlier that you went to the temple regularly. Mm -hmm. When you went to the temple, did you certainly the first time or two? Did you feel anything? Unusual there was that a good experience? Um, I felt like I was. I had a lot of lot of anxiety the night before. Yeah. I just felt like oh, I was just so, <laughs> you know, it was just such a strange anxiety yeah. that came over me, and um, and I just felt like I wasn't worthy enough, or you know, what if I wasn't able to keep the promises, or you know, that kind of stuff. But I went and I experienced it, and I was kind of like a where's this blessing and gift that the Lord's promised us, you know? Mm. But, you know, maybe I'll understand it later. What did you think of Jesus uh, up through this temple time and, and being active early on in the marriage? I loved, loved Jesus. Yeah. I, I, I always, I put, I put him before Joseph Smith in the, in the prophets, the well, LDS prophets. Good. I always loved him <laughs> yeah. very much. And considered him your I, elder brother, of yeah, course. Yeah, it was a different view that way, but yeah. I, I always felt like I wasn't enough for him, or I was not approved, or just oh, that you were that I wasn't approved, that I wasn't enough, that I was that there was a wall between us. Even though you were doing yeah. everything you were right. supposed to, well, that's not a good feeling, is it? Yeah. So it just <laughs> kept me spinning, trying yeah. more and more. And I guess to follow up with that, what did you think of the Bible when you were 
Latter-day um, Saint. I guess you carried it to church every Sunday, but you know there were a few <laughs> verses that really stuck with me that I liked. But you know, yeah. like trust in the Lord with all your heart, lean not to your own understanding. And sure. There were some you know key scriptures that we learned in seminary that I liked, but for the most part, as a whole, I didn't comprehend it or understand. It was confusing, and mm -hmm. some of it really would conflict with the Mormon um, teachings, yeah. so we kind of steer away from so them. End up reading a lot more in the yeah, Book of Mormon. Yeah, I definitely Book of Mormon just read the Book of Mormon, especially yeah. after President Monson, who said, you know, stay, stay said, you know, counsel us to read the Book of Mormon, yeah. you know, frequently. Fascinating. So what happens in life? What uh, um, make, you, make you look at things a little differently? Um, I had a lot of, um, like I said, at eight years old, I became really concerned about my salvation and like I wanted to be there with my family. And you remember right? this this I whole do, time. I do remember it. it was, Interesting. I remember my mom coming and said, you know, re don't run faster than you were able. Gave me that scripture. You know, and okay, well that doesn't, didn't solve it for me. It was really frustrating. So what happened at that time is I, because I didn't know how to turn to the Savior where he would you know, refresh me and forgive me and, and knew that kind of the love that the Savior that I know now, mm -hmm. I turned to more, okay, I've got to control my behavior. I've got to get this under control so I can do those things that need to be done. So what happens when you do that is you are focusing on your behavior and what yeah. you're doing and your heart doesn't change. You so didn't you have start... any confidence in, in the process of Mormonism then to... Is that a way to say it? Or? Oh, I just felt like the, I guess, the survival of the fittest or whoever, yeah, okay. you know, had the strongest will that could white-knuckle the, their way through or right. the ones who made it, you know. Interesting. But, um, yeah, I just, so it became like a, you know, I became more and more into this controlling of my own thoughts, feelings, you know, instead of letting the Lord change my heart. That's where it needs to happen because we can change our behavior, but if our, our heart's still wanting those things and, and, and uh, after those things, then you create this distance, right? This, yeah. It's um, the Lord wants our hearts, you know, so he can work with us and change us and shape us into who he wants us to be. And you were trying to adopt or look at these different things, bringing them back into the church, right? I mean, the reason for doing this search was to to add it yeah, to what so you I were already doing in Mormonism. That yeah. That that main goal of the salvation, going to the celestial kingdom, you know. Um, so, yeah, eight years old. So that became that that main goal of me controlling yeah. and using my own mind and right. my intent to focus on those things that I needed to accomplish. Yeah. So to what do else did really you do? Really goal setting. So, and then as as a, an adult, that carried through. And so as I was dealing with a lot of sicknesses or issues with my children, you know, I I tended to go to people. I was suggested to go to a naturopathic doctor, mm. and the naturopathic doctor suggested me going to a, a, a therapist who is an intuitive consultant, and I didn't know what that was. <laughs> but this person was going to supposedly help with some issues, some deep issues that were not just physical. I knew there was something more than the physical that was the issue. Yeah. The root of the issue was more spiritual or emotional. It was some things that needed healing. So you felt like there was something so we went, there to... Yeah, yeah, we went to this these doctors and... And she, she was LDS, she was temple attending, and so I trust her, and she, I thought she was dealing with the Holy Spirit, but it turns out she was more of a psychic, and she could tell us things about us, she could tell us things about our children, that were, tr that were right on, I'm like, well, gosh, she's so spiritual, wow. wow, you know, and these things would help, you know, but then at the same time, we'd have to keep going back and getting more help. So anyway, I was drawn into this whole different approach to health and an alternative health. Do you, you think know. many do that? Oh, the clinic that we see saw in Utah Valley has about 20,000 people they see in Utah Valley. It's huge. Oh my huge. goodness. So people that are searching for something that's missing yeah. <laughs> in their yeah. life. And it's usually starting with, you know, more like the herbs. And I'm not saying that's bad to, no. to treat your sure. illnesses that way, but then there's a lot of things that are done, like, uh, uh, you know, how in the olden days they used to swing a pendulum, you know, you could tell yeah. yes or no, or the, you know, you can ask the Ouija board and you'll get a yes or no. Well, the muscle testing is a similar thing that is used 
uh, to get a yes or no answer and they can ask questions to find out if what's wrong in your illness yeah, and yeah. where it's located and how to clear your emotions <laughs> that are blocking your and I, I mean I was sucked into this and I started after seven years I began to be very um, they felt I was gifted in these things so I began practicing myself and training mm -hmm. with one of the biggest um, well-known and still active this whole time yes oh it, it you know wow you know, I, I didn't see a problem with it. Yeah. <laughs> I didn't look at it as a problem yeah. at that time. It seemed just like it was um, very helpful and, you know, it was bringing healing to me and to other people I was working on. Um, but you started seeing things a little differently at some point. Mm -hmm. Yes, there is. Um, so I got really involved in it where you would kind of mix uh, a spirit guide into this and eventually spirit as I was working and healing people and I was manipulating their energies and trying to help clear things out of their bodies that were causing illnesses, spirits would start showing up and saying, well, I want to help you with this person. I'm their great grandfather or I'm their, really? you know, their guardian angel. And I never thought anything like, great, come on in, help me out. <laughs> Sounds like family history. <laughs> Exactly. Well, you know, we're prone to it as Mormons to accept the, well, we do the, the deceased. For the dead and, 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 and how many times yeah. people say, oh, I talked to my grandmother right. in the temple. Or, and I know, you know she's accepted the work I yes. did for her. So we're conditioned to think that that's okay to talk to the We're very close, deceased. aren't we, to that? But we know in the Word now, in Deuteronomy 8.13, it says, you know, we don't talk with um, the dead. We don't talk with, deal with yeah. familiar spirits. But So as I'm working on this, so these spirits that were helping me, they started kind of creating a little bit of conflict where I would start questioning. I always question if they really were who they said they were, mm -hmm. or if, you know. Started and, testing them. Did you? Yeah, and yeah. so the the Lord um, asked me, or not the Lord, uh, the the Lord gave me a scripture that would that kept coming to my mind. It was First um, John one five, and it t says, "Beloved, test the spirit, try the spirits." Um, oh. I can read it, yeah. and, um, and actually before this, as I was trying to figure out my husband, I have to be, give a lot of credit to him because he did say, honey, you might want to hold off on some of this stuff, you know, just hold off. I'm, I'm questioning that there, there could that be something, from God or not. that yeah. there could be something wrong. So I'm like, yeah. okay. Let's, let's question it. First John. Can you help me out? I'm still new with this. Well, we're. First John. Peter, Peter, John, John, John. Thank you. <laughs> Is that the one? No, it's not. It's not first John. Oh, regular John. Matthew, Mark, it? Luke, and John. I still do that little song. <laughs> anyway, it. He says it says in there to try the spirits. I should have marked it. Apologize. Yeah, I think I'm familiar with that scripture too. I don't know that it's in in John either, but. Probably in first, second, or third John. Maybe. Okay, well, I'm going to post it. <laughs> okay. <laughs> but to try the spirits and ask them. It, it, and did they you do that? Were uh, believed in Jesus Christ. Yeah. If they confessed that he, if they came in the flesh yeah, as the Son of God, and I did that. And when they, I did that, they would take off. They didn't answer. Uh oh. Or they would say, "I am Jesus Christ." And then, what do you say to that? <laughs> so I started going. This is this isn't right. You know, and I would, um, I stopped working so really with them. Deceiving so they would right? either avoid the question or say, what do you think? Oh. Why are you asking me? Don't you believe me? Yeah. You know? And so I it's, really had to, th there were different, different angles that they would choose. Because these aren't spirits that I saw with my naked eye. It was more the inner eye yeah. and a spiritual eye. And so um, they could come in all sorts of, presence, yeah, sense their presence. And you can come in all sorts of shapes and forms. But. As I tested them, they and I knew that they weren't of God. Um, they tor started tormenting me, and oppressing me and my family. And I'm talking about where I would be in bed and couldn't move because I was paralyzed for mm -hmm. hours. <laughs> so what finally? So, yeah. What, what finally happened? Well, um, I saw. I started um, asking for help. I went to my bishop and I said, Bishop, I'm dealing with these things. I don't know. I need to repent. I've done something wrong. Yeah. Um, I've gotten involved in something. 
and he didn't know what to do, and so he said, "You get back with me." <laughs> what would you do? I mean, you're the yeah, bishop, right, and someone's uh, telling yeah. you they're seeing. They're, we'd say they're delusional, right? Yeah, right. Or <laughs> be a little worried, yes. <laughs> or you know, so I told him that, and his um, father-in-law was Elder Perry mm. of the Twelve, and so I figured he had some connections. Sure. Or his no, the state president was father, related. Father okay. So I thought, well, he'll help me out, maybe. Didn't hear back, didn't hear back. So I got online and I started looking for people who dealt with this, who knew how to deal with deliverance from mm. this. Because I knew Jesus did it. He said, those who believe in me can do these things, you know, can cast out demons. It says that in the Word. Yeah. So I figured there's got to be some Christian group that believes this. And so I, I found um, uh, uh, some teachings about deliverance. I tried to do it myself. I spoke those prayers. But there was no respect there. I didn't have the Holy Spirit. Yeah. So, so they didn't, it was... continued to increase in, in, in its intensity because they wow. leave, come back stronger. And so um, I oh, it kept praying to, for the Lord to help me. And he showed me some things I had to remove from my life, um, what things I needed to repent of. Yeah. And I got rid of all my books on New Age, all, all my energy work books, burned them, you know, got every, every rid of everything. Things started clearing up. Harry Potter, I'm talking about anything that has to do with witchcraft or sorcery, yeah. got rid of it, cleared the house. And that really uh, helped um, relieve some things, but there were still some things that were holding on. So I, I, um, I was praying to the Lord to know what to do, and I really felt I needed to be born again or sanctified or yeah. something like that. Yeah. I didn't really know what that meant. Yeah. <laughs> I didn't grow up with that. Needed a new spirit of yeah, some sort. Yeah, something new refreshed in me. And I was praying for that and, and trying to understand that, doing some research about it. And a pastor called me up who um, was about my business, and he um, was talking, introduced himself as Pastor Charles, and I said, you're a pastor. Can you tell me what it means to be born again? Oh, my goodness. Oh, and I bet he loved that question. <laughs> he's, he didn't think I was serious. Yeah. And I, and I said, I'm very serious. Please, could you tell me what it means? Because I, I don't understand. I'm missing something here. And so he, he explained, um, explained it to me. And he asked if he, I could pray with him. And, if I, and I prayed with him. And um, as I prayed, uh, I just saw, sobbing over the phone, knowing that the Lord had forgiven me. It was the first time I knew he'd forgiven me. Wow. And so, I mean, as an eight-year-old, trying to do those things to get that approval. To earn, earn your way. I knew that he'd forgiven me. And I'd been involved in some really bad things. You Have know? you understood grace before? No. Uh, what no. did that come to mean to you? Um, I, I didn't even, I get my pastor had to teach me what grace was and sure. even the definition. What we is don't that? Do, we you know? just don't do that. It's a gift, you know, that the Lord gives you you know, and mercy. Paid for no understanding sins, mercy and, and forgiveness. And I still, yeah. I, I, uh, I love that because where would we be? You know? Now, even through all this, and as I said, you've really only been out of Mormonism a couple of years or so. You went back to the temple. What did yeah. you see there well, that was con so, of a conflict? <laughs> right, exactly. I, as I'm, I, I received the Holy Spirit, you know, yeah. and I'm like, oh great, you know, that's what I needed. So I'm going to keep going on my way. Go to. I kept going to church. I kept, you know, into the temple. You were a faithful, dedicated I, I, Mormon. <laughs> well, I thought there were issues, but you know, if we could just help out this this body of people, I love them, you know. Yeah. I know you do, <laughs> and um, you know there's still some truth there that I'm going to hold on to. Yeah, well, I guess, right? yeah. So I kept going, and but as I had been filled with the Holy Spirit, and I started recognizing what God's presence felt like and was to me, yeah. that peace that began in me, um, and I would go to church, and all of a sudden there's this conflict for me you know that's just this different spirit and i don't it's just creating this this grating on me and rubbing wrong and so i'd go to church and it'd just be like barely make it through sacrament meeting and then come home you know you know <laughs> breathe a sigh of relief you know i'll have to do it again next week but you know so eventually i could i was meeting with my pastor and skyping he's from india so we meet and he'd read the word and i'd feast Learning on it more and learn more, more. Yeah. 
and I'd grow in the Lord, and then I'd go back on Sunday, and be like, this is a different spirit. This is not the spirit I know. There's wow. something different. And, and so I, the, as that conflict grew, I start, stopped going because I wanted that peace that God gave me. I wanted just to be with Him alone. And that was no, a big risk. Yeah, personal relationship, yes. yeah. And I just wanted to be with Him. But so. did you see the some of this occult and, and those practices in the temple? Was that part of coming out? Was that... Um, God did tell me to get out of the temple. When One day I did go trying to oh. figure out this whole conflict yeah. after I had been renewed. And your sense was, and, yeah. And I went to the temple to figure this out, the Book of Mormon. You know, I'm still holding on oh, to no, this. Boy. Why? Why? Am, what is it? Is it true or is it not? You know, yeah. I don't understand, you know. So I went to the temple to try to figure it out, you know, and... I know that probably doesn't make sense, but it did to no, me. No, it does. And I, um, it does. I went to the temple too. At yeah, the last that's minute, where they tell you to trying go. Trying to save Is my religion. Really, you know, tell me, you know. And yeah. so I asked. I get into the celestial room, ask the Lord, start to deep prayer, and I hear an audible voice that says, "Get out of here." Get here. And I just had to obey, and I just sobbed because I thought, I'm so unworthy. I thought, God just doesn't want me in the temple. But it took a while. I figured it out. And you realized that was him telling me spirit. that I'm protecting you, you know. Yeah. This is not where you belong. So now the Bible means so much more, and oh, it's, Jesus means so much more. I mean, more. how can you understand the Bible without the Spirit? I mean, it's just, it's... It's beautiful. All the words it is. they and they I've make sense. So they much. come together. They yeah. they feed me, yeah. and um, so I, I I love to read it. I read it every day. And well, Jenny, we're just about out of time. What would you say to your family and friends about your journey and mm -hmm. and coming to Jesus? <laughs> so since I can't find anything in the Bible right now, <laughs> um, actually, I wanted to read this. Go ahead. Isaiah six two one. The Spirit of the Lord God is upon me because the Lord has anointed and commissioned me to bring good news to the humble and afflicted. He has set, sent me to bind up the brokenhearted, to proclaim release to the captives and freedom to prisoners, to proclaim the favorable year of the Lord and the day of vengeance and retribution of our God to comfort all who mourn. And that's what Jesus did. He set us mm -hmm. free. And all who are in bondage, all who, you don't even know maybe that you're in bondage. But if you ask oh, the Lord, I I if you ask Him, he will, he will show you, and He will yeah. give you the grace to change those things. That's yeah. what He did for me. He gave me the grace to repent of those things like we don't even know we're doing. Well, Jenny, thanks so much. I know you have a blog. They can go mm -hmm. to Jennifer or Jenny uh, Douglas Jennifer on Douglas. YouTube, yeah. and you can hear more of her story and uh, some of the things that she continues posting there. So, yeah. wonderful story. Thank you. You're and welcome. God Thank is so good, me. isn't he? He is. Can you believe that you made this journey? I know. Let's see ya.